Sensitive data is often involved in certain critical workflows, but that doesn't mean that users should have access to that data at all times. In this video, we'll explore one of the ways to protect sensitive data in Foundry using a tool called Cypher. Now, Cypher allows us to encrypt or hash our sensitive data at a variety of different levels of granularity. So for example, at the cell level, at the column level, or even at the dataset level. By applying these cryptographic operations, we can retain important sensitive data for use in analysis or operations, but obfuscate it by default to protect it. In this video, we'll walk through an example of how to obfuscate data with Cypher. At the end of this video, we will have taken a data set that looks like this, with the plain text customer name column, and we'll have converted it into a data set that looks like this. Now, in a future video, I'll explain how we can securely decrypt these encrypted values and recover the original data across a wide range of Foundry applications. But for now, let's tackle encryption. To start using Cypher, the first thing we have to do is create a Cypher channel. And to create one, we can simply go to the green New button and select Cypher Channel. Now, a Cypher channel is a resource in Foundry that stores the cryptographic information that's used to protect our sensitive data. We can then go ahead and name our Cypher channel and pick the algorithm we want to use for encryption. For this example, we'll pick aes Civ, which is a deterministic encryption algorithm, which means that if we run the same original value through this algorithm, it should create the same obfuscated value each time. And note, aes Civ is also an encryption algorithm, not a hashing algorithm, which means that our obfuscated values can be decrypted back into their original forms. Now that we've selected which type of algorithm we want to use, we still need to actually specify a unique secret for our crypto system. If you already have a well-formed AES Civ key, you can select single key. I don't have one of these well-formed keys already, so I'm going to ask Cypher to automatically generate one for us by clicking this auto generate button. Lastly, we can specify a prompt that appears to a user whenever they encrypt or decrypt individual values with Cypher in a Foundry application. We'll skip this step for now, but in a later video of the series, we'll cover how to build justification prompts for Cypher. Our Cypher channel now safely contains all the cryptographic information that we need to encrypt and decrypt data. Now we can see the details of our crypto system on the right-hand side of the screen. But how can we control who has permission to use this information to take these actions? We can do this by issuing a Cypher license. Now, similar to how a driver's license gives its holder permission to operate vehicles, a Cypher license gives its holders permission to use a crypto system defined in a specific Cypher channel. Now, to create a Cypher license, we can click the New License button in our Cypher channel view. Let's call it My New License. Now we have to choose what type of license we want. Different license types let us perform different operations with the license. In this case, I'm going to select the High Trust License. This will let me use my crypto system in Foundry's Pipeline Builder tool. By selecting both encryption and decryption for this license, Anyone who has access to this license will be able to both encrypt and decrypt data in Pipelines Builder. Then I can click Submit to create our Cypher license. Now we're ready to use this license in a pipeline. If we wanted, we could share this license in the Compass file system with other users to let them do the same. But for now, let's start building a pipeline using Pipelines Builder to encrypt our data. To create a new pipeline using Pipelines Builder, we can go to the green New button again and select Pipeline. Now, this will open up a brand new instance of Pipelines Builder, which we can go ahead and save in our folder. Then we can go ahead and add our original data set, the one that doesn't have any encrypted values. And once that original data set is loaded, we can hit Transform and choose Cypher Encrypt from the dropdown that shows up. Now, we're going to encrypt the customer name column. So let's search for it and select it from the dropdown. Now, we also need to specify a specific Cypher license to give us permission to encrypt with a specific crypto system. Let's select the one that we just made. Then we can just hit Apply. And it might take a minute or so for our encrypted data to load. But once it does, the output preview below 
shows us that our customer name column now has encrypted values instead of the original values. We still have to save these encrypted values to an actual data set. So let's click back to graph. And then if we click on the transform path card, we can select a new data set to create an output. Let's give this output data set a name, customer data encrypted. Now we can click deploy at the top and track our build by clicking the view button in the toast. Once our output data set is fully built, it's ready to be used to back objects, analyses, and decision making.